The global competitive landscape has changed dramatically. You have competitors from around the world coming into markets that never existed before. It was almost a barrier of entry, it doesn't exist. That's now coming back to then those companies, so I have to change myself. This is not slowing down. There's nothing taboo for them. They're questioning everything, and they're looking at the product as more an experience than of just bending metal. So for them, innovation is the name of the game. Multiple forms of innovation at the core of their business. The business models can shift into information. You know, information itself can be the, a product or the product in some cases. You know, with circular economy thinking, it's this idea that at the end of life, there is not an end of life, but it's remanufactured, repurposed, and that you may be providing a product, but you're not selling the product, you're providing its capabilities. Like a car company doesn't sell the car, they just sell the capability of transportation. So what becomes the more valuable product is the information about it. And you're going to see some companies really change their business models to selling information. 3D printing will have a major impact in various aspects of not just manufacturing, but even service. Do I carry all the spare parts if I'm an aircraft carrier? Or do I carry the capabilities to go create new parts? And do I do that in, right nowadays, a lot of things are done, they have a machine shop. Well, what if I don't need the machine shop anymore, I just need some printers? Historically, robots have been for those companies that had a lot of money, right? A lot of programming, a lot of you know, capital expense. And you're, you're advanced robotics where things are becoming much cheaper, not just to buy, but also to program. It's gonna be probably forcing it down lower into the market. So making mid-sized companies be able to buy capabilities that they didn't have before, do things much more quickly. The cloud provides almost infinite compute power compared to what an, an individual company has. Is they, let's say you wanna do simulation, uh, heavy simulation and all of a sudden you just want to go get 200 nodes. You know, there's services that can give you that. It allows for a much smaller company to have the capabilities that only a few big companies have. Digitalization is, is critical to organizations. That end-to-end -end connectivity of information informs where it can interact. The context comes along with the information and you have that full connectivity. Uh, without that digitalization, you're gonna continue to struggle. You're not gonna get those increases of uh, efficiencies that are possible. And again, I'm not talking about five, 10%. I'm talking about 30, 40% type of improvement. The way I, I view digitalization is it's, it's making information into usable forms. Because a lot of our information has been locked away into files. Their information is not transformed in a way that it can be used and interact. If I start from a business perspective, I start with the vision of the company. What am I trying to deliver to the market? How do I want to do that? Where do I want to innovate? Okay, I want to innovate in my manufacturing processes or my product or whatever, and I drive that down. If I had information, connectivity, associativity from those decisions all the way through realization, ultimately all the way out to the field, I can get things right the first time. I can do it much more quickly than I've done it before. I can hit target markets I never was able to hit before on a consistent basis. an innovation platform or a product innovation platform, which is a combination of capabilities that they, uh, one is an underlying platform that supports information modeling, data management, process management, simulation. Then wrapped around that, there was a set of what we call functional domains. You know, traditional things like product realization and, um, and portfolio management. Most companies have elements of it, and some have quite a number of those elements, but they're not integrated, they're not on a platform, they don't interoperate as well as they need to for optimization across those domains. We talk a lot nowadays about systems engineering, for example, but usually it's around the product, just the product, you know, domains of electronics, software, mechanics, for example. And systems optimization has to go across the organization. So if I'm looking from a user perspective, I have to understand the context that I'm in, not just within the design of the product, but the design of the manufacturing system, the design of the logistics. So I have to have a capability or set of user capabilities that you bring me the information in the right context, the embedded in visualization, uh, and other things that allow me to understand the context within iWork and within the context of the rest of the business. A lot of times the files we store are decisions, not often not how we got to the decision. If I really had an intelligent model, I would be able to understand from that model, why did I use this material? 
you know, what was the, the simulations around that use of that material versus some other material. Maybe, you know, I didn't decided not to use this type of product um, material because of expense. Well, maybe two years later, all of a sudden that material's cheap. But the model didn't have that information. It didn't have that context. So the model has to be smart about how do I get manufactured? What capabilities do I need to, in order to go do that? But it also means that the organization, when they're doing product development, have to understand the capabilities of manufacturing. If you can't manufacture well and efficiently, you're not gonna make the profitability, you're not gonna get on time and market correctly, you're not gonna have the right quality, so it really doesn't matter what you do later. And you wanna be able to have that sensitivity that you, you design it to what can be done, and then you validate that you did what you said you were going to do. So that, that closed loop is saying, are the processes I designed, the tooling I designed, everything else that I've designed, executing as I expected. Uh, to be able to drive that all the way into manufacturing and seamlessly associate into onto the factory floor and have that connection in understanding and driving the machines, for example, driving the robots, you know, just not just simulating them, and, but virtually commissioning them and then providing that robot and, and PLC logic right to those devices it can be a huge differentiator. Digital Twin, as people talk about into the product, but also into the manufacturing area, is very critical, especially for discrete companies are building complex products. The time that can be saved uh, just by not making an error in that transition into the physical world can be the end of the product to the market. Adaptiveness or the ability to adapt is key to success for industrial companies. The scalability, upgradability, and the maintainability of the solutions are important as well because the users want to have access for the latest and greatest capabilities. But there's a lot of systems that have been implemented in the past that support PLM that are obsolete. Information, smart innovation platforms, for example, those have to evolve as well because if you're stuck with doing things the same way you did them five years ago, and everything else around you changed. You know, the external, your know, competitive factors changed, your customers and their demands have changed. If your systems don't support that change, you, you'll be dead. Siemens portfolio is one of the broader and deeper ones in the market. A very broad set of capabilities and bringing things together into what we call the smart innovation portfolio of solutions. It drives to, I think, a longer term vision that Siemens has had for a number of years. It's connection into the factory floor, a you know, full closed loop. So there's a lot of good work going on to build out the, the portfolio of capabilities that allow for that end-to-end -end connectivity. One of the you know, main reasons for the, the synergies that existed for the company to come together to begin with is the connection into the factory floor, the, the physical side of the factory into the controllers and other things. And then this overall philosophy that Siemens has as a company is the, the whole digital world and, and, and the digitalization and the digital enterprise and, and their, their push for doing that. There's a lot of synergies there and, and clearly uh, the Siemens PLM capabilities and smart innovation uh, portfolio is gonna play a major role in supporting that.